Hi everybody. I just wanted to show you um, a painting today. Um, I just really felt in the mood to paint something. And I'm doing uh, stuff in colors that I've, I've, I don't think I've ever done anything in the colors that I've chosen. And I'll show you those here in just a second. Um, I am painting on top of another uh, because this one I did a few months ago and I just didn't love the result of it. I didn't love the composition. It was a little kind of messy and this gold kind of took over and covered a lot of the colors down here. So the beauty of art is that you can just do it over and do something on top of another thing. So um, it's kind of a a metaphor about life really but um so I'll, i don't have to really do anything to this I'll, all i'm gonna do is just paint over it um i have put you can see um these big thumbtacks i put into the bottom of the painting just to lift it up off of the um this is the silicone mat surface that i use uh, that will collect any paint drippings when they dry, I can just peel them off. Um, you can see lots and lots of uh, pieces of other pieces, uh, like other paintings that I've done. Um, normally on the back here, I would tape uh, off all the back so that paint doesn't get on it. Um, this is a painting that I did before I started doing that on every painting. And so I figured there's already paint on there. I'm not gonna do it again. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me just show you the colors. Um, first off, I have white that we're going to use as uh, basically like an underlying layer to help move the paint around and then also within the layers of color uh, that will give dimension, highlight, and also effect. I use a particular kind of paint in this. This is a mixture of acrylic, regular acrylic paint and a satin enamel. Um, and the satin enamel will give it the ability to interact with the other paints and cause kind of a, they call it like a cloud-like effect, um, but it really just kind of brings out um, different elements you might be able to see in here, just how it um, creates cool cells and different layering and um, really neat effects. So I have a little cup of that white so that I can add it into my pouring cup um, without having to use that big clunker over there. Um, I also have this, this is called Indian Yellow. It's a really pretty color. Um, and this is uh, green gold and I've added some bronze to it. So it made it metallic, which is pretty. Um, then I've got a really pretty copper. So I'm going with like really earthy tones kind of staying within the um, green and orange family. This is a gold, really pretty. And I've tried to get all of my consistencies of the paints to be the same. Um, so this is a dark green, uh, this is called sap green. So I just, this is the dark element to give contrast because anytime you're composing a painting, you want to make sure that you have enough contrast between your colors because uh, that's what creates um, the impact. Otherwise, if everything is the same shade or same uh, tone, um, then there's not enough contrast to see the different layers and you don't see the effects as well. Um, and so those are all the colors that I have. And then I will be pouring into uh, a cup to pour onto the canvas. Let me grab. So I'm just going to be using this uh, cup that I've used before.
can see kind of in the actual cup all the different layers. So now to be able to spread this, we're going to start with um, some white here in the center. created a cool effect on the inside of the cup that you can see there. Okay, so we got this really cool green um, thing going for us here. And I already can tell that the paint is kind of sliding this direction. I want to kind of prop it up a bit. I want to make sure that our surfaces are level. my uh it's really hot today and um i'm pouring in my garage so <laughs> this is uh, a little hot and it's creating the making the paints themselves to be pretty thin so um it's a little bit thinner than i would prefer but i think it's gonna be just fine so i'm gonna use the blowtorch to just popping bubbles here on the surface really cool formations of cells over here and over here with the copper and the green. So let that kind of melt together and see what kind of party they're going to have here. So it's very fun. Cause you never know what's going to happen, what kind of interactions you're going to have with the paints. And that's really the, the mystery of it. Just don't know. Okay. So I'm going to, while that's kind of interacting with one another, I'm going to pour white around it. This is, like I said before, this is kind of that flow extender. It's going to allow the paint to kind of just float the colored, uh, like the paint pigments here that I have on top to flow on top of the paint. Otherwise, when you try to spread paint, it tends to roll over on itself and um, and you lose some of the details that you have. Let me just spread that out a bit.
pretty. If you can't tell, green is my favorite color. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now there's a scary part because then you know that you can mess up what has already been done. start to try to spread this out. Always moving back to the center to maintain your middle composition. a lot of this white that's the whole point is that you lose the white instead of the color and the color doesn't um, roll over on itself I'm trying to get a corner to go this way so you just kind of let it but we're guided and I don't want it to go off the edge yet Time to just kind of look at it, see what we have so far. Give it another real torch. There's any areas that you don't really care for as much you can kind of think of what you want to start to take off of the painting i know this is a little bit squished so i'm going to try to
didn't love what I had poured before, so I just decided to do it again. And that's fine. Like this is how the process works. You really just see what you like, see if you can do it over again. Um, and I'm just gonna be a little bit more careful as I spread this. I don't have to be as careful about trying to get all the corners. I've already got paint on the corners. So just really focusing on the center composition. I use less white in this, so I've got more colors um, showing through and looking good so far, guys. Got some really cool little effects. So I'm gonna try to stretch this out and really be careful um, getting what I want out of this. about the light. So pretty. Got a lot of green. 
see up here at the top. I mean, look at all that lacing. See all that? So what happens when you use transparent colors? So the dark green is a transparent color. That's why it's not dominating everything. But it just creates all these beautiful veins of green. And with the copper and the gold and the yellow and the light green. Oh, I like that so much better. <laughs> oh, just love this center right here. Isn't that so cool? All right, you guys. This is what happens when you just follow your instinct. You lose a lot of paint, but that's okay. In order to create, you must distract. That is how it goes. Thanks for sticking in with me <laughs> and I'll see you next time.